Welcome to another edition of RCE. Again, I'm your host, Brock Palin. I have here Jeff Squires from Cisco Systems and OpenMPI. Jeff, thanks again for helping out with the show. Hey, Brock. Looks like we've been going on a, a visualization stint recently. <laughs> yes, actually, the topic today we're going to talk about involves two former guests from two different packages that are actually part of this global package we're going to talk about today. But before that, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Brock Palin, all one word. And then uh, you can also just find that on the RCE website, rce-cast.com. You can find all of the old back shows there because I think iTunes only shows like the last five or something like that. Uh, and there's also an RSS feed where you can subscribe and to be able to read an RSS reader. Jeff, I also think you have a blog. I do. There's a blog pointed off the RCE cast. And the big news in that area is that we are finally a new blogging platform at Cisco, and all of us are very excited about it. Because I think I think the package that we use today is the best blog or so. So we're excited for the uh, the new launch in about a month. So, Woo! Okay. Well, let's move into our topic again. I mentioned that two of our guests have been on the show, so you probably remember Burke Gavici. Um, who was on about VTK, but he's going to be speaking with us today about Paraview, along with Kenneth Moreland um, from Sandia, who had been on talking about Ice-T, which I believe is used inside Paraview. And we have a new guest today, Urket uh, uh, Aichi. He can correct me on destroying his name when he introduces himself. <laughs> but uh, all three of those guys work on Paraview, a uh, visualization package, uh, the details of which we will let them explain. So, uh, Burke, why don't you go ahead and start off um, again, say a little bit about yourself for those who haven't listened to the previous show. Sure. Uh, my name is Berk Yeveji. I uh, lead the scientific visualization and the informatics teams uh, at Kitware. Um, Kitware is, uh, for those that don't know, is a small company that about 80 people uh, that focuses on uh, visualization, informatics, uh, image processing. Uh, and computer vision. I've been here uh, for about 10 years. I, uh, the whole time that uh, I've been developers of uh, developer of VTK uh, and Paraview. I, ha I was the lead uh, programmer for uh, Paraview for a while, but now um, Utkarsh does that. I'm Utkarsh Ayachet, and uh, I'm a technical lead here at Kitware. And I've been here with Kitware for over six years now. I I, I've been working mostly on Paraview uh, as, as a developer. Uh, I've been involved with other projects related to Paraview and VTK, and uh, I guess that's pretty much it. This is Kenneth Moreland from Sandia National Laboratories. I've been the uh, Paraview lead for, at Sandia for several years now. My main interest in the past decade has been in large-scale parallel visualization algorithms and systems. Our research at Sandia has been driven by advanced scientific simulations and world-class supercomputers. During this time, we've been using Paraview as a research and deployment platform. Okay, so why don't you, one of you guys take and give us the 10,000-foot view of what is Paraview and what does it mean to the average research computing user? I can do that. So uh, Paraview is um, a, an application for visualizing uh, scientific uh, data sets. I, um, it, it, it was designed originally for uh, visualizing large data sets, but um, I think um, I don't want to necessarily restrict my definition to that at this point. Um, so the Paraview project started uh, about um, 10, 11 years ago uh, for the purpose of uh, building an end-user application around the visualization toolkit. The visualization toolkit at the time was already um, old. It was already, I believe, 10 years old or so. Um, and uh, but it did it, it it's really a developer tool and it there was no way of uh, delivering functionality to to our end users and as we started developing large data visualization functionality uh, in VTK we wanted to be able to um, deliver that uh, therefore we started building uh, Paraview as essentially a kind of an end user extension uh, to VTK uh, since then obviously our main focus has been uh, large data, data analysis and visualization, but um, Paraview uh, has also branched into a lot of other things. So therefore, um, it is used 
commonly for scientific data analysis, both small and large. Um, and it is also a develop, development platform uh, for those that want to actually build upon uh, a toolkit for end user applications uh, and extend it uh, to deliver functionality, again, uh, in the area of scientific visualization, as well as we, we've been doing uh, more and more lately uh, pre-processing of uh, scientific simulations uh, and things like that. So that's that's a very short summary. Obviously, I'm sure we'll we'll get more into uh, what Pairview is and what Pairview does. Okay, yeah. So that was that was a good summary there, Pairview and and a little bit of VTK there. Uh, round this out with explain what's the relationship to Ice T then as well. Ken. Well, I guess I'll take hey, yes. Uh, so um, Pairview uses Ice T as a parallel rendering library. So when you're running Pairview in the large scale parallel mode. Uh, you need some sort of mechanism to be able to render images that provide the visual representations. So IST uh, basically provides that uh, capability. That, that ties it all nicely uh, into why you are all working together, the relationships between those those pieces of software. So uh, let me let me jump back to something you guys said earlier. Utkarsh, you said that you were uh, the technical lead on Paraview at Kitware, and Ken, you said you were the lead um, for or Paraview at Sandia. So how do you guys split it up? Do you have different roles or are you leads of different parts of Paraview? How, how does that work? So Paraview um, is, um, is a, lar is a lar larger project that is um, that has many contributors, both uh, from funding point of view um, and but also from you know contribution as, as developer contribution. Um, Kitware is really the kind of the hub that where all, all of it comes together. We we started doing the original um, initial development of Pairview, uh, and we con continue to be essentially the, to be the gatekeepers uh, for for Pairview. And um, uh, folks like Ken and others um, are developers of Pairview, and then you know there are leads at different institutions like Sandy and Los Alamos. Um, but Kitware kind of manages the whole project and we're responsible of the uh, releases and um, and things like that. Yes, yeah, just to elaborate on that, so Sandia um, has been a major contributor to peer review for most of its lifespan. Um, we have our own particular interests. We'll have developers at Sandia working on peer review itself and we'll also have contracts with, with Kitware to do uh, work specific for uh, Sandia's interests. And of course, the reason why we're so keen on Paraview is that uh, Sandy and other national laboratories uh, regularly encounter these really large meshes, meshes through advanced simulation and computing program, which typically are much larger than those encountered in academia and industry. So a lot of the other solutions that are just uh, other people are interested in don't necessarily work for, for Sandy as needs. Okay, so in the introduction about what Paraview was, you asked about, you mentioned that it was kind of like a front end to VTK. Uh, does Paraview actually implement all of VTK's functionality, or is that just an impossible task to do because of flexibility? Or um, does even Paraview, is all of its functionality come from VTK, or do you use some other third party libraries? So VTK is basically a toolkit, right? It's a toolkit which provides you the data model, it provides you the pipeline model, the execution model, and all that. And Paraview uses almost all of that, the infrastructure provided by VTK for its data processing. But since VTK is a toolkit, it doesn't really have the application level logic to, uh, say, provide the what happens when the user creates a filter, what happens when the user creates a reader, all that. Application logic is typically uh, not handled by VTK at all because it's a toolkit, and that is left to Paraview to for Paraview to manage, and that's where Paraview deals with it. And also, Paraview adds its own extra things for to VTK to do things like parallel rendering or data distribution and making sure that the data ends up at the right nodes for rendering and so on and so forth. So, all Paraview has almost. It, 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 it does indeed have the entire VTK directly brought in, but not all the filters or readers are exposed in Paraview GUI. Uh, but that's only because uh, well, some of them don't really work well in parallel uh, because of that, or other reasons. It's just because no, the, there's no real, uh, we just didn't feel the need for it.